Hello YouTube and welcome to a new series I'm starting. I'm not really sure what the title of it's going to be, but the gist of the video is I'm going to be looking at smite.gg, which is a website that shows you win rates on um, Smite and the gods currently in the game. Um, it tells you based on the patch, the game mode, which is Conquest obviously is which I want to talk about, and then also the rank. So I can switch up here and go from rank to rank to see what the best win rates and the worst win rates are for each um, level of Smite. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be looking at the top win rate gods, basically the best gods in the game, so to speak, based on statistics, and the worst gods in the game. And I'm going to talk about how to counter the best gods in the game, the people with the highest win rates, and how to um, do well on maybe the worst gods in the game, or maybe suggest some buffs or something if I really just think the, the god is just bad and not really that playable, and it's really hard to do well with them. Um, I kind of got the idea from yesterday's stream. I was watching Scream, another pro player. He was looking at this website, and I just found it really interesting. I've never really gotten too much into it, for one. And I constantly, constantly get questions about how to beat certain characters, how to play certain matchups. So the gist of the video will be about matchups and how to beat gods based on the gods you're playing, the items you're building, and just overall play style and little tips and tricks to beat them. Um, but it's not going to be a complete just like matchup-based video where I take the first god in the game, Achilles, and tell you every counter matchup and do him every... Um, good matchup for him. I tried to do that in the past. I started a series like that, but I quickly found that it would just be too difficult, too time-consuming for me. And um, I think with how often the game has changed, I think it'd be better to just give you some overall tips and kind of give you the the theory behind um, countering gods and how matchups work instead of just completely telling you um, outright every single matchup that's bad or good for a certain character. You know, I feel like it would change from month to month. And it doesn't really give you the the foundation to think for yourself in the future in order to figure out what gods um, you know fit your playstyle or what gods fit the matchups and stuff like that. So I'll give you a quick example of this real quick. We'll switch over to Smite. So what I mean by this is let's just take Mulan for example, since she's the newest solo lane god. Um, I'll be talking about every role, but for the most part, it's focused around solo. So that's why I'm starting with Mulan. So Mulan is the newest god. There's not a lot of there's not been a lot of experience. Like I haven't played against so much Mulan that I just know from experience what is good and what is bad against her, right? Um, there's things I can think about. There's theory crafting that I can do just based on her abilities, how her mechanics work, um, just what her descriptions say. There's things I can think about in theory craft that would be good matchups against her and bad matchups against her. But the number one thing in order to learn matchups, and this will be like this for pretty much every any any game that you play, is um, play time and experience. The more and more you play against a character and the more and more you play as a character, you're going to learn their strengths and weaknesses very quickly. And that's why I always recommend to anybody that's asking about counter matchups that they just have to play a wide variety of gods, play as many gods as you can, as many gods as you like playing at least, and um, just try and figure out what to do in certain scenarios and certain matchups and stuff like that. Against certain gods, you're going to have to play differently. So taking Mulan, for example, just based off her abilities and um, kind of what I've gotten from her from my short playtime of her in comparison to all the other gods is that she has some long channel times uh she's pretty slow with her abilities you can interrupt her one you can interrupt her two you can even interrupt her, interrupt her three and her four is probably her worst ability by far um it's very slow and it puts you in place so just theory crafting about a matchup for her any god that can punish her for standing in place with her ultimate would be a good matchup so something i thought about is something like thor thor could get a free double tap on her he can wall off her all of her abilities because they're slow channel time so she can uh, he can stun them. Um, they'll just get a ton of free damage whenever she ults. He can go into the air when she starts her ult and get a free ult landing. Stuff like that. Like In theory, it sounds like it would work, and it could work. But another thing you have to think about is that Thor's early game, just by playing him, I've played him a ton, his early game in solo isn't really that strong, whereas Mulan's is because she has so much base damage on her abilities. You just look at her abilities. They do way too much damage, 120 base damage on this. 75, and it hits twice, so 150. It's just, It's just ridiculous, right? So you kind of have to play around that. In theory, it should be a good matchup, especially when you get to the mid game with Thor into Mulan. But um, in practice, it might not be as good as you think it is. You just have to play around that that play style of you know being better the game and her good. So that's just kind of um, how theory crafting matchups works. And then of course, you just have to play it and get experience for it. Now you can always ask streamers and people who know more than you about certain matchups and what they suggest, which is why I'm making this video and why I will always answer questions on my stream or on my YouTube about certain matchups and what you can do against them. But again, you have to take that in stride and practice it in game and get experience with it to really feel out the matchups. You're never going to know every matchup just based on like watching videos and stuff like that. You really have to try it out for yourself. And some gods, 
Some matchups might be good for you and your play style, but bad for another player because you just really, really know how to play around it because you play a specific way. So, yeah, let's get right into the, the main topic of this video, which is Smite GG. So, starting off with Hades and his matchups, especially in the solo lane. Now, Hades can be played in mid, could kind of sometimes see in some other roles. You'll see him in Grandmasters play a little bit in the jungle and ADC and stuff, but for the most part, he's a solo laner. He's a frontline mage, similar to like a Jean Kui, like a Changa or something like that that you'd see in solo lane most of the time. And I'm actually not surprised that he has the highest win rate in the game. Well, I am a little bit surprised because I think at high levels he's pretty bad. It says here that in Diamond Plus, he's actually still around 60% win rate, 59.89, which is crazy to me. I think it's just because there's a lot of one-trick Hades players or people who really, really, really like Hades, and every time they play him, they just want to win because they are just they have like an, a bit of an ego with him, you know? It's, there's some characters like that where they're not played a lot, and because they're not played a lot, the few times they are played, they're played by people who are really, really, I wouldn't say good at the character, they just, they're just like one-tricks, basically, because I don't think the character's upside really is that great. So... I, I constantly get questions about how to beat Hades and what to do against him in lane in my stream. Um, so I'm not too surprised by this. Now, Hades is a god that will always win the lane for the most part. There's a couple matchups that I'll talk about where he can't really win the lane. But Hades is a god that is the definition of winning lane and losing game. So Hades can completely bully out the lane because he has such good clear, such good sustain. Um, he, his clear early on is ridiculous, so out clear pretty much everybody. He can hit down the tower really early on. But the problem with Hades and winning lane is that if you build anti-heal against him and know how to play around him, if he rotates with the lead, it won't do anything. You can just ignore him. You can kill him. You can do whatever you want against him if you're you know, playing around it correctly. And that's why Hades isn't a good character, especially in high-level play. Um, he can get that lead, and most of the time you should let him get that lead just because if you fight into him, it's going to be a little bit rough early on. Um, and then just get your defense item on online. Once you get some defense, you can start fighting into him and just let him rotate. Because the difference between giving a Hades a lead and somebody like an Arthur or like a Kakolan, Achilles, or anything like that, is that when a Hades rotates to your back camps and like sits there and looks at your jungler or he encounters the jungler in the middle of the jungle, he can't really do anything to the jungler. Like the jungler can just jump away to kind of do whatever he wants, whereas a, a physical, a warrior with defense and a good, bit, a good bit of damage who has a lead, who rotates into the jungle, will absolutely own your jungler, and the jungler won't really be able to do much. So that's the difference between Hades and another god getting a lead. But going back to Smite... Um, some gods that are good against Hades in lane that you can look to play are Osiris, number one. Osiris is really good. Anti-heal on his ult, obviously very good against Hades. Osiris pretty much wins every matchup in the game because he just has way too much damage, low cooldowns, too uh, good of clear early on with his AoE autos. Keep in mind that the first four or five levels, Hades will outclear you and kind of you know poke you out a little bit, but that's not really what you're playing for. You're just going to clear up the lane, give him a little bit of pressure early on, and then once you TP back in with your, your Runic Shield, you will absolutely own him. It'll be really hard for him to, to do much. And basically what you want to do is ult on cooldown because the Hades doesn't really have a lot of kill pressure on you, to be honest. Um, even with your ult down, unless you're getting ganked, if you use your ult pretty consistently on him to poke him out, obviously he's not going to be healing, so you're going to have a lot more kill pressure on him. And... Another good part about this matchup is that it's really hard for him just to play up into your side of the map in the jungle because you have this super low cooldown in your one. You're going to be constantly slowing him. And if your jungler ever ganks, it's just going to be a pretty much a free kill because you can secure the kill with your anti-heal and lock him down pretty easily. You can chase him after his dash with the ult. Um, you can tether his clear, which will make it a little bit more awkward for him to get that full clear going. And it's just a really good matchup. If anybody's ever played Osiris, you know that he is very good into most matchups, so definitely try him out. And the other one that I think you should try out is Arthur. Arthur also wins most matchups, and that's part of the reason I would suggest playing against Hades. If you're really just trying to abuse Hades from the get-go and just be really obnoxious for him, plus just kind of be better in teamfights naturally because I don't think Hades is that good in teamfights, um, then Arthur is definitely something you look for. The only problem with this matchup is that he has a two-second fear, which can be pretty good against your channeled abilities on Arthur. But it's not really that big of a deal. You have easy ways to get out of his ult with your three um, your charge ult if you really need to use that. And you just want to basically be doing the same thing as Osiris, consistently fighting him, consistently poking him out. You still want to be rushing Glad Shield. Um, you still want to be rushing Glad Shield on Arthur, then going into your Runic Shield. It's possible that you could even skip boots, just go Glad Shield straight into Runic Shield because you don't really need movement speed early game on Arthur. Um, but I wouldn't rec completely recommend it. You can just uh, give it a go if you want to. Uh, but yeah, try Arthur and Osiris as well because he can actually, or not into Osiris, and two. Hades because he can actually um, out-trade him and kind of make him useless from early on. Um, and those are the two matchups I would definitely recommend. You can play some other gods into Hades, but they're not really going to win the lane. 
You can play stuff like Vamana, Ama, stuff like that. But you, what you want to really do, be doing on these gods is getting loose, like I talked about in my other video. You kind of just want to let him win the early game and be more useful in team fights and kind of outfarm him, run around the map, and be really obnoxious because it's going to be really hard for them to kill you and lock you down um, as a loose warrior. So yeah, that's Hades. And the next god we're going to be talking about is Arachne. So Arachne isn't played a lot in the soul lane, but we're still going to talk about her. Arachne is weird because she's not very good. As you can see, she falls off really hard as you get higher into the ranks. She's down to diamond or down to 51% in diamond, which is still above 50%. But it really, I think that accounts for just that, that one trick um, scenario I was talking about where a lot of people are just like one tricks on her that so she's not played often. Um, she is 62% in the lower ranks. And I think that's just because she kind of just can stomp noobs because she just slows them. She throws her three out them, at them and just kind of runs at them. And then she has yeah, her ult for safety. And I think at lower ranks, it's really hard for people to understand to just turn on people and try and kill them. But I think that's part of the reason uh, something like Arachne is really good and can pump stop pretty, pretty hard. So as far as uh, Arachne goes, especially in the jungle, because that's usually where she's played, the best things against her are two options, I would say, are anything with slow immunity. So um, going over to Smite. Thanatos is really good against her. Uh, he has slow immunity on his two. Only thing you got to be worried of is the spiders body blocking your death scythe, but that's not really that big of a deal. You're never really going to be in threat to her if you always have your two up for her three. And another really good matchup or matchups for her is anything with a jump. So any god with a jump that can jump over a wall, if she either threes you, you she uses her web on you, and you jump over a wall, it's going to be a lot harder for her to go around obstacles and commit to you. A lot of times she's going to have to use her ult to chase you, especially in a team fight. If she threes you, she blinks on you and threes you, and then you just jump away, um, especially over a wall, she's going to have to use her ult to commit to you, and her acting is really, really easy to kill with her ult. I mean, she's probably the worst character in the game. Like, her ult is really bad, in my opinion. It's just a really bad ult. Her is. Um, and she's a really bad character without her ult because she doesn't really have any safety. All of her damage is single target. Um, so she really has to rely on getting those specific kills. The first kill, the per first person she blinks on, she really needs to commit to that in order to go to the next person because she has no AoE. So really hard for her to get a lot of work done when her ult is being forced on cooldown. And it should be being forced on cooldown when you have a lot of damage for her and jumps that can easily get away from her. So those are some of the better gods to play against her. Uh, moving on. Looks like we have Aphrodite coming up next. So Afro... Let me preface this by saying that she um, recently got buffed really hard, and I'm not really sure why. Um, she's a very, very annoying to, god to play against. Her healing, especially in uncoordinated team fights and like ranked and stuff, is very obnoxious, very hard to deal with, and um, just not very fun, right? However, there are definitely some gods that are good against her, especially in the soul lane. You will see her played a bit in the soul lane. I think you'll see her a little bit more in mid right now because of her buffs. She actually does a lot of consistent magical damage. Because they buff the damage on her 2 and her 3 by a lot. So you'll see her more in mid, but she's still going to be played in solo lane, especially um, by like some e-girls and stuff. So, um, yeah, we'll talk about some good gods in her. Pretty similar to Hades. Any god that can kind of anti-heal her and just kind of bully her early on is really good. So gods like Osiris, for the same reasons as um, against Hades, just really good early pressure. Anti-heal for the ult, obviously really good. Arthur is definitely a good option as well. Just really obnoxious early on. Can fight at the blue buffs. It's going to be really hard for Aphrodite to walk into the blue buffs to defend it if you're trying to invade it with your early pressure and your glad shield. Um, Herc is even good just because of how good his early game is. Um, you can put her out of position really easily. She's going to have to use her beads or ult on almost every one of your twos and your pulls and stuff like that. Um, and then again, you're just so obnoxious early that you can do that. Another option that is Sobek. Now, Sobek isn't really obnoxious early on i mean he actually kind of is now after his buffs he's just ridiculous but he's also really good against afro and team fights because he can just displace her so easily so she always has to use her beads or ult to put her out when she gets put out of position and then also he can just use his ult to chase her down in the carry that she's attached to or anybody that she's attached to he's so tanky that it's really hard for them to peel back and just try and burst him down he can just keep chasing them down and then obviously he has anti-heal on his three a sickening strike for the healing reduction so that's really good against afro in lane and in team fights so um, that is definitely an option that you can look for. And then last but not least, I'll say Changa. 
Ganga is really good at bullying her early on. She can heal the wave against Afro and Solo, which is really nice because Afro's clear isn't amazing. It's a lot better now that they buffed it, which is really annoying because Afro's early game is supposed to be weak. It's supposed to be a late game payoff character, but um, Tranga definitely bullies her out. She has anti-heal on the three, so if you go to Vine, it's going to be really hard for um, Afro to heal in the laning phase. Um, it's good in fights because you can kind of just match that Afro sustain. And then, um, of course, uh, Trongo's early game is pretty good, especially with her passive buying items from lane. Um, and yeah, you can kind of just bully her out. You don't have to go TP on uh, Tronga, whereas you kind of do on Afro. You don't have to, but if you don't, you're going to be backing to base more than a Tronga just because she has her passive and meditation if you buy that to bully out in lane. And as far as mid lane Afro, basically anything with burst, any mage with burst. So I think Hebo is really good against Afro. Um, I think Raijin's really good against Afro because he can apply Divine Ruin with his 2 and burst down with his ult. Anything with burst because the problem with Afro is that she can reset in a team fight and get everybody really healthy. Um, the problem right now with Afro is she does too much damage. I'm sure they're going to nerf her. It's pretty ridiculous. But in general is that she just has so much sustain. She can kind of keep people alive and everything like that. The only issue you have to worry about when you're um, going a burst character against Afro is that she can use her ult to mitigate some of your, your burst damage. So you can kind of bait that out and play around that. Um, the best you can. The problem with going like damage over time characters against Afro is that if they just reset the fight, keep her alive, um, it's gonna be really, really hard to kill her in the next fight because you've committed a lot and didn't really um uh get your job done, right? So moving on. That's Afro. We're looking at Anubis. And I'm gonna talk about Anubis in the Solane because I actually very often get questions about Anubis uh in Solane and how to play against him. And what to do um because he's kind of a pup stomp god that you'll see in soul lane and i think people have a problem with him because his clear is so good very similar to hades where i think players have a really um hard time dealing with characters that just insta clear and kind of just like run at them and start looking at them and they're like oh but i have a wave like what am i supposed to do am i supposed to int into them and i think that's what, what a lot of people do actually um do against him so um yeah so similar to anubis or similar to hades anubis has really good early clear and can outclear you and be really annoying early on. Um, but the problem with him, is, especially in Solane, is that he falls off so hard. He's not going to be your typical frontliner. He's not going to be doing um, a lot of the initiating. He's going to be hard to... Uh, he's going to be very easy to just focus out in a team fight and kind of single out and DPS and kill, especially in the mid to late game. So you kind of just have to let him hang himself, right? And the best way to do that is let him have his way early on from levels 1 to 5. Let him out clear you with his burst or his crazy damage on his 1 and his 3. Let him out clear you, do his thing. Because um, the problem with characters like Anubis, Afro, and Hades, all these characters in Soul Lane, whenever they get a lead, they can't really transition it. There's no way for them to like walk into your side of the jungle and do whatever they want because you can follow them. And if your jungler rotates, they're the easiest kill ever. Imagine trying to do that into like an Osiris with Glad Shield or Arthur with Glad Shield, or like a Cocoon with Glad Shield. If they're in your side of the jungle, yeah, you might be able to kill them, but it's going to be a really hard fight. And if they play it well, they might be able to get a kill in the process. A a an Anubis or a Hades or anything with like Bancrofts, no defense, walking to your side of the jungle that are immobile, like you kind of just have to be patient and let them hang themselves. And that's going to be frustrating a lot of the time. But one of the top tips I tell people to do is on any warrior that you're playing, um, I suggest playing a warrior against Anubis so you can actually bully him. Let's just take Ama, for example. I wouldn't say this is the best matchup, but Kukulun's really good against him. Every bully matchup's good against him, Anubis, or, or um, Achilles, stuff like that. What you want to do against Anubis, especially if you know you're playing against him, is go Warrior's Blessing. Warrior's Blessing's really good against him because the reduced damage on the uh, the passive for every um, tick of all of his dots. Very good. You want to go Tier 1 Runic Shield. Obviously, not the full Runic Shield. Let me redo that. A tier 1 Runic Shield. Go 3 pots. This is going to give you a little bit of magical protection early on, which is nice against his poke. But really what you're doing is you're trying to rush this Runic Shield as fast as possible. So once you get enough for your Runic Shield, you teleport back in with it, and then you start fighting him. Then you start running him down, hitting him, consistently poking out. You'll be out training him very hard, especially because almost every Anubis solo goes full Bancrofts, right? They just rush Bancrofts. They're going to have no defense, and defense always in the early to mid game out trades offense. Um... As long as you play it correctly, and by playing it correctly, I just mean you kind of just run at them and start poking them out, forcing their cooldowns as often as possible, forcing their ult, their safety. If they went beads instead of teleport, try to force their beads and tell your jungler to gank them because it's a really easy kill. They won't have defense, yada, yada, yada. 
Um, and basically, the way you play until you get enough for Runic Shield is you let him out clear you a little bit. You try and tank the archers out of the tower line so that you still get gold for them. You don't want to be losing every wave to tower and gold. You want to try and get some of that gold because you want to try and get your Runic Shield as soon as possible. You want to try and tank up the archers um, before they hit the tower, and then your Enchanted Buckler will make sure that you don't take too much damage from Anubis and poke. Um, you don't want to just sit in the wave as well. Do not sit in the wave and take his poke and clear for free. You want to make him choose. If he's going to full clear the wave with his abilities, so be it. Let him do that, and then you start trying to hit those archers at the tower line. Um, but don't just sit in the wave and let him poke you for free. That's when it gets really sketchy where you're taking way too much poke. It's really hard for you to TP back in with your runic shield, and then it's going to be hard for you to out-trade him. So, um, yeah, ideally you TP back in with a runic shield and a chalice, but that won't always happen, and... Um, I do recommend trying to get the Chalice as soon as possible because Anubis has a lot of poke and Chalice is pretty much good all game. So, yeah, it doesn't matter what character you're playing. I suggest a Warrior and Assassin. Build like this against Anubis and then start running at him. Be patient in the early game and then let him hang himself. Once you get your defense, you'll start owning it. That is Anubis. Moving on to the last one. It's going to be Odin. Not really too surprised by this. Odin's seen it in soul lane. He's seen it in support. I think support is his most common role right now. He's even seen in the jungle a little bit. Um, I actually think his best role is probably support and solo. I think he's pretty good in solo. Um, but yeah, he saw, saw some recent buffs, or I guess a rework to his three. It's pretty insane now. It has a stun on it. It has an attack speed star right on it. I think that's the most underrated thing about the three right now. Because a lot of people use the, the stun, but it's a 30% attack speed steroid all game. It's just a base 30%, which is really, really good for your team because it works for your teammates, your, your allies. Um... And I see people just using the stun, but you got to keep in mind that that 30% is going to be, it's going to amount to a lot of damage for your team if they're nearby. Um, but as far as countering Odin, the way you counter him in soul lane is that his clear is two, one combo is Raven Shout, Bird Bomb, everyone calls it. Um, it can be interrupted. And what I mean by that is if you CC him right when he lands, the two damage actually won't go off. So any god with like an instant knockup or instant CC is going to be really good against him. Um, characters like, Sobek are pretty good against him. Even though he can be locked in the cage, it's not really a big deal. It doesn't really matter as a tank being locked in the cage for the most part. It's really good in lane against him because you can two right when he lands on his jump and it'll knock it up and remove the damage. Arthur is actually really good against him. And you might be thinking, well, I feel like it's pretty bad because he has the anti-heal on his ult. Um, he can cage you in and it's really hard for Arthur to get out. But the issue with that is that you have... Um, slow immunity on your threes you can literally just three in a cage and spin around and it's gonna be really hard for them to lock you down and actually kill you not only that but the charged ult on king arthur lasts about three seconds and that's at least early game basically how long odin ult lasts right so you can basically just take somebody there so it could be the, the odin for all you care take odin into the air whenever you have your charge ult up and he ults you and then his ult's going to be gone by the time you land for the most part um it's they're not really going to get a lot of value out of that not only that but you can knock up his clear like i said before you can cripple his jump and generally you just bully him really hard so um osiris is another good matchup obviously because you can walk through his walls you can bully him early game if he ever jumps the wave you kind of just attack him and it's really hard for him to do pretty much anything um and yeah, you kind of just bully him for the same reason I said as the Hades. Um, I like a colon as well into Odin. Only problem with this matchup is that whenever you go into your Berserk form, you can't get out of the cage, right? Because you don't have a jump. You do have a leap on your Salmon Leap, I think it's called. It's pretty, pretty troll. Salmon's Leap. You can jump out of the cage with that. But he's just another guy that can bully Odin early on. He can really uh, bully him for jumping on the wave, especially. And only thing you got to be careful with this is in team fights, whenever you go into your Rage form like he is right now, you gotta be careful about getting cage but the thing about odin cage right now is that even if you can get out of it it's still a strong ability because it does damage and it slows so in team fights it's not even really about how much value you get out of the odin cage it's just about how many people you get in it so what i mean by that is if you get three people in it and they all have jumps and they jump out there's still a lot of value in that because you force their jumps if they use them and you slow them and damage them and then you just get a, a nice uh, initiation in a fight it's a really good start to a fight so that's the problem with Odin right now, and that's why you don't see as many counters. Um, but yeah, I'd also suggest playing Odin into like Aphrodite or um, Hell, some of these meta picks. So we talked about Aphra before. Might as well say that Odin as well is a good pick into her if you can get it. It's banned a lot of the time. It's also played in support a lot of the time. But no matter where you play uh, Odin, it's a good pick in Afro because it locks her down really well. Um, yeah, that's pretty much 
it, I believe. Now, I was going to talk about the lowest win rate, win rate gods, but we're already 25 minutes into this video, and uh, I don't want to extend it any longer, especially because my voice is fading. <laughs> but yeah, those are the top five uh, gods in the game right now, um, quote unquote, based on statistics. And I tried to tell you guys how to play against them. Another good uh, item against Arachne is Guardian Mail. Even as a carry, it's going to be really hard for her to um, DPS you down because she relies on her auto attacks. Um, really, really, really hard to actually kill people. So Midguardian's good against her. Witchblade's good against her. Um, Bulwark of Hope is a really good uh, tank item against Nubis. I would not recommend going it early on, but later on in the game, you want to build damage items or bruiser items early on in the game so that you can bully them out while still being pretty tanky. Um, Upgraded Curse Stonk. If you're a soul laner that doesn't need to go Blink, a lot of time I would say that Blink is more valuable than Curse Stonk in team fights, even against healers, just because Blink allows you to get to the healers and really be obnoxious towards them and actually initiate a fights for killing them. Um, but Curse Stonk, upgraded Curse Stonk uh, as a soul laner, or tell your support to go very, very good against Afro and these healers. Very under underrated, I, I think, amongst um, some lower level lower level players, just because the upgraded version of it makes it so you one shot everybody um, that's getting healed. So that's really nice. And then, like I said, basically any bully matchup against these characters that want a free laning phase, that want to get out of the laning phase, stuff like Afro, Hades, uh, Anubis, stuff like that. Um, bully matchups are going to do really well against them. Stuff like Osiris, Arthur, Kakolan, stuff like that. Definitely look to play those. And like I said at the beginning of the video, it's all about experience and trying stuff out. So I try to give you guys some general gu guidelines and stuff to play and some stuff to try out. But for the most part, you just have to experience it for yourself, play it, um, get a feel for it, and then you'll really understand how to play into certain matchups and what to do. So, yeah, pretty long-winded video, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm going to be trying to do this basically every patch or every few patches, basically whenever these win rates change. Um, they do change a lot, and that's kind of the whole point of me not being um, too specific with my counter matchups and stuff like that um, and give you guys a general idea for stuff to do. Yeah, we'll see what happens for the next video. But until then, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. If you like this type of video, feel free to let me know as well and leave a like. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.